Hi friends, it's Marie at Living Felt. In today's tutorial, we have a foolproof method for needle felting perfectly shaped little bowls. We have discovered a fun and easy way to needle felt bowls that you can use as ring bowls, jewelry bowls, catch all bowls, maybe even hats for your dolls or little props for your other sculptures. This method is so easy and anyone can do it and you will have perfectly round and nicely dense shaped bowls and the mold makes the process repeatable. You can make them any size you want and I bet you'll even come up with some new shapes once you learn this technique. The inspiration for this project came when I endeavored to create a little hummingbird nest. I made this a few years ago and I never shared the project because a ton of people were making hummingbirds and I knew I could never match the amazing quality of those beautiful creatures. But anyway, I'm happy to share this methodology now and hope you have fun needle felting some bowls, hats for dolls, maybe some nests or other props for your felted creations. In today's process, the first thing we're going to do is make a shape for a mold, then we're going to cover it with fabric, and from there we'll needle felt our bowls. Supplies for this project are minimal and easy. We're using our CW1 core wool for this. You can use roving or batting, and I like wool batting for this. Today I'm working with bergschaft and pumpkin. You can also use Maori or MC1. For the tools, you're going to want an inexpensive muslin cloth, a strong rubber band, a needle felting mat. Coarse needles for this are optional. I definitely want to use the Clover Pen Tool loaded with 42 triangle needles. You'll also find that having a single 42 triangle felting needle is helpful. For quick reference, you can grab this fantastic PDF that Jordan made for us and use it as a guide. Our first step is to needle felt a very dense ball. We're beginning with five grams or less of our CW1 core wool. Pull off a long, narrow strip. Start by rolling a very tight tube. Tuck in the ends and roll a very small ball, needle felting as you go. I like to use a coarse needle for this. this tiny ball should be dense, whether it's going to be your mold size or just the inner of a larger mold. To needle felt a ball, it helps to have a really firm surface to work on. We are using our wow mat because it is very dense. So needle felt as you go and make this very dense and even it out. If it's a little airy, don't worry about it but get all of that air out by using your 42 triangle needles and create a very dense, smooth shape. To build up in size, we're going to work in very thin layers. Even if you're making our medium size mold or the largest mold or a larger mold, if you will build up your layers with one or two thin layers of core wool per wrap using your fine 42 triangle needles in a cluster. I especially like the spacing of the needles in the pen tool more than my rubber banded tool and that's why we're using it. By using the pen tool loaded with the 42 triangle needles, you'll be able to make very shallow pokes and still build an incredibly dense ball. For the next layer, wrap crisscross so that the ball stays nice and round in shape. Each layer should be firmly and smoothly needle felted before adding the next. Since this ball will be our mold, 
Just stop at the size that works for the bowl that you wish to make. You can refer to the included diagrams as a reference guide. If you don't want to needle felt an entire ball as your mold, you can make a half dome or a semicircle. I still like to start this by needle felting a ball and then you end up just wrapping wool around the outside over and over to form that half dome shape. It's up to you. I actually find making a ball is faster. Once your molds are formed and shaped, it's time to cover them in fabric. We use this thin muslin fabric, not only because it's inexpensive, but that's a plus. It also has a nice open weave and a little bit of stretch to it. Wrap the muslin around your ball and it's nice to have enough fabric left over so that you have a handle. For our medium shaped ball, my fabric is approximately 11 inches by 11 inches. Wrap it very tightly around the mold and then secure it with a very strong rubber band. That acts as an additional resist that prevents the fiber from your bowl binding with your mold. For your first layer, pull off a very thin strip of batting that will go all the way around your mold. Wrap it so the ends slightly overlap and tack it down with your fine 42 gauge felting needle. Very shallow pokes and very lightly tacking it into place on the mold. Guide all the fibers around the bottom of the ball. If any area of the ball can be extra dense, the bottom or the rim are both good candidates. Leave the very top edge of the bowl unfelted, that's about a quarter of an inch, and needle felt around the rest of the ball and the base with light, shallow pokes of your fine felting needle. We're using our 42 triangle felting needle because we can needle felt with very shallow strokes. This entire process is going to be very gentle. We're not trying to adhere the fibers permanently to the mold. The mold is just a resist to tack things into place and this base layer is going to be the foundation on which all our remaining layers are anchored. So a very fine felting needle is key to this process. On the first layer, stop needle felting before you think you should. This layer can be very lightly tacked into place. With our first layer lightly tacked onto our mold, it's time to add our second layer. Use a thin strip just like you did on the first wrap and wrap around the circumference of the ball. You want the fibers to line up at the top and to be long enough to wrap around to the bottom of the bowl. Lightly tack this down with your 42 triangle felting needle. Once you have the second layer tacked into place and smoothed around the bottom, use your pen tool to further compact that layer and make it nice and smooth. Once you have lightly tacked down these first two layers and are happy that everything is nice and smooth, it's time to peel the fibers off your ball and turn them inside out and put them back onto your mold. Immediately after turning my bowl inside out, I like to needle felt it back to the mold. Just lightly tack it down so that it's holding in place. Add your next layer of fiber and needle felt it down. I like to use the pen tool for this entire process going forward. Needle felt your bowl until it's nice and smooth and add an additional layer if you still have it. Your bowl might be three or four or five layers, however much wool you've decided to allocate but make sure to save a little bit back so that you can patch in any thin areas and make the entire shape nice and uniform. Once you have this side well shaped and nicely smooth, peel your bowl off of your mold again and turn it inside out. 
you'll notice at this point that your bowl will stick to your mold less and less, and that is desired. It's okay to turn your bowl inside and out several times and needle felt it against your mold. This will give you as smooth a surface as possible, both on the inside and the outside of your bowl, because the needles should just go to the center of the mass of wool and not all the way through the other side. Keeping your strokes shallow will really help ensure this takes place. For those of you who have needle felted a hat or a purse with us, you'll probably recognize this methodology. It's built on the same idea. The key is to turn the piece inside out several times and to needle felt so that you're no longer connecting with the mold. If you would like to make a hat, a larger vessel, or even a purse with this process, check out the link above so you can see how we do that. Shaping the rim of the ball is one of the final steps, so save that to last and leave that top quarter inch unfelted. You might be questioning which is the inside and which is the outside, and that's okay. Just choose what looks the best to you, leaving the outside the least wrinkly, and we'll get it as smooth as we can in the final stages. When you're happy that the inside of the bowl and the outside of the bowl are both looking well felted and no longer loose fibers or fluffy fibers, then it's time to turn down our rim. With the bowl on the mold, we will gently fold down the loose fibers that we've been saving back and tack them down with a single 42 triangle felting needle. We want it to have some mass at the top, so just fold it down evenly and tack it down as you work your way around the bowl. Once all of the fibers are tacked along the outside edge, then we go back and flatten them along the outside just by doing our same shallow needle felting. Form the rim by needle felting straight down into that top edge. I like to start this with a single 42 triangle felting needle and work my way around an entire section or around the entire rim of the bowl, it's up to you. But I like to finish it by using the pen tool with the 42 triangle felting needles. It's almost the exact size of the rim of the bowl and makes everything nicely even and uniform. Once you have your rim shaped and all of your fibers needle felted, well then you can take it off your mold and do any final touches. I like to needle felt a little on the inside and the outside around where I folded the rim down and along the top of the rim. It's all refinement at this point. We're just smoothing everything down and making it look as uniform, even, and rounded as possible. If you're having difficulty with stiffness or your bowl keeping its shape, you might not have enough fiber. There can be a tendency to try and use too little fiber and what you need is wool entangling with wool to create the mass that we call felt. So don't be shy and try and use at least the same amount of fiber that we include in the diagram. For reference, this little bowl weighs two grams the medium bowl weighs five grams, and the largest bowl weighs 15 grams. For suggested weights of the molds, see the included PDF. On my small and medium bowls, the thickness is about a quarter inch, and on the largest bowl that we're showing today, it's about a half inch. Yours can be any size you like. I do find that the quarter inch helps me create a nice firm bowl. If you're planning to make your bowl weatherproof or just give it a more resilient finish, check out the video in the information link above on how to stiffen your felt. 
One thing we love about this project is that you can reuse these molds over and over, but depending on the color of the fiber for your bolt, you may need to switch out your fabric. Needle felting these little bowls is really quick and easy, and it's no strain from building the really dense, firm molds all the way up to making the finished bowls. For this example, we've kept them all nice and plain just to share the technique, and we know that your ideas and your creative imagination are gonna take them to a whole new place. I've had a really great time sharing this technique, and I can't wait to see what you make from this process. We hope you've enjoyed this process for needle felting these little bowls, and I really look forward to seeing what you make as well. We hope that you'll give the video a thumbs up because it helps us show up for other folks, and make sure to subscribe so that you get notified every time we post a new video. If you would like more needle felting videos, check out this one right here.